obviously after the first um, paper mache helmets, the black ones, the next ones to come in were the same but painted white as I said and then these were the, the later ones that came in obviously made of plastic just a safer score if not a bit safer than that but that particular one it was the day or the week when Oldwich Colliery was closing down I'd heard on the radios it was being wound down and I went back to the pit to just have my last look at it uh, and this had been thrown in one of the baskets as they did in the baths if, if something was worn out or they didn't want it the waste paper baskets and they'd throw them in so I was fortunate enough to, to get the owl meat but on the way round, I met the colliery manager as I was walking around taking pictures. This was one of the pictures that I took of the site, which means a lot to me because this was the electric shops where I worked and that you'd go in in the morning looking, perhaps have a coffee, and then you'd walk from there to the pit top and get in the cage and then that would be the end of it. But that one, I took that picture on the last days of the pit but I met the manager there, who I knew, he wasn't the manager when I was there, but I did know the chap, and he said, I've got something for you, Keith, which I thought was really decent, and he actually gave me that lamp check, which again is old each colliery lamp check, not mine, of course, but what a treasure to put in the collection, and that's, that's all in keeping with the photograph and that helmet, and it's got a bit of coal dust on DNA to prove where it came from. Well, these are original, genuine, Collier's clogs. Um, they're obviously made of wood at the bottom with leather and then the steel tips on the bottom and the back of course, the, the, the tips. And I always remember as a little boy, my dad wore clogs for 50 years of his life. He never wore anything else underground and he, from time to time he'd bring them home to tip his clogs. He'd put new tips on. And many times I've seen him in the kitchen at home where we lived with a quarry floor with a little hasp as they called it and he'd bring his clogs with his um, special nails they have these flat nails that go in there and doing his clogs up in the kitchen I, was, I used to look at the oh them are great boots and then of course I saw him for many times down the pit in them and he wouldn't wear anything else found them so comfortable to walk in which I know they are because I do a few charity walks in them but they're an original nice pair they, they tell the story Later on in the industry, different sorts of footwear came in. And these are obviously waterproof boots with, a, again, toe cap. They protected with a toe cap, really well made underneath. And if you were in a wet district, which there were some wet districts underground, these would have been far better than the ordinary boots or the, uh, the clogs. Um, as I say, they're quite heavy, but most things were in the pit. Um, and I remember getting these from a, a gentleman up at uh, Tunstall. I, I had this phone call from a local farmer and he said, Keith, I know you're collecting and there's a chap up there with a lot of mining memorabilia, but mainly a Sylvester. And I thought, if I could get my hands on a Sylvester, we called it a dog and chain. He said, well, he's got one in his shed up the garden. So I shot over to this address in Tunstall, and sure enough, he got the dog and chain in the in the um, his little shed at the top and had it for years, which I've obviously got in my collection now. But he'd also got them boots, which again are in real nice condition. Um, probably he's just worn them a bit in the garden, I don't know, but them are a perfect example of, again, NCB um, rubber boots, which are good.